come from parents, homes with parents on drugs, maybe I need to deal with kids whose parents are in jail. Because they need mentoring too. Right. Yeah. Maybe I'm about to expand it. How do you deal with kids who come from families that ain't talking the right way? Praise God. Praise God. And this is what they learn. This is the education they are getting at home. And when you get into the school system, and I know the teachers in the school will tell you, it is hard to teach them. When they learn disrespect at home, when they learn how to curse at home, when they listen to a family to your rabbi, I know I hear you hear me preaching every time I get up here, and they gonna keep me hearing me preaching because it's still going on. They're listening to all kinds of words from the time they were youth is being sold in their spirit, and whatsoever you sow, so shall you what? Reap. Amen. My son, Proverbs 1 and 8. My son, hear the destruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of my mother. For there should be an ornament of grace upon thy head, and chains upon thy neck. Young people who have saved parents, don't forsake the teachings and the instructions of your saved parents. Do not forsake the instructions and the teachings of your saved parents. Wear it upon you, especially if your parents have made it in life. And your parents got the education, they got the degree. Follow their advice. They've been there. If you got a mentor in your life, well, not, forsake not the instructions, amen. Forsake not the instructions of your teachers. Forsake not the instructions of the pastor. Yes, yes. Those who know how to make it in life. Yes. Amen. Yes. Those who came, a pastor came out of the projects. It's hard to look at somebody, you know, you look at a pastor at his age, think that the projects have been around that long. Oh, yes. Amen. You know. But the projects didn't come up yesterday. And I watch some of the same people in the projects he grew up with are probably strong out there now in their older age. You got older heights out there now. Amen. Amen. They, well, they weren't talking about drug testing senior citizens for nothing. Right. Amen. All the heroin addicts of the 60s ain't dead. Oh, no. Amen. Ike Turner was in his 70s when he died and he had drugs in his system. So don't think there's no old time heights out there. And young people from parents, watch out for this drug called ecstasy. Watch out for ecstasy. It ain't just in the white neighborhoods no more. You don't hear much about it in the media, but it is tearing our young people up. They can't make no more crackheads no more, so they're making ecstasy pill heads. And I'm hoping I can get some more information. I can't even find that much information about it on the internet, how it's affecting young black folks. But those who know, it's probably going to be worse than crack when it really gets to when they get through it, because it's making our young people think they're invincible. Yeah, that's Whatever mood you, that you're in, it's going to enhance it. Right. If you think you want to kill the police, it's going to make you want to kill the police. You wonder why somebody taking guns <coughs> and aiming it at the police. Yes. And then we get mad when the police kill our young people. Well, he didn't have the young man try to rob the officer, the officer. He didn't know he was officer dressed as a clown. Right. And I guess he thought that was Bozo the clown, but it was. Yeah. Popo the clown. <laughs> and the family said, "Why he didn't have to shoot the more than one time. Duh. Your son, his mama said, he might have had a gun, but he wasn't going to um, shoot him while was the gun loaded. Stop defending our kids when they're wrong. Don't, don't run and get your kid out of jail and you know your kid is a mess. And you go bomb them out of jail for him to go either do two things that's gonna happen. Okay. He's gonna get in more trouble or he's gonna end up dead. Yes. Talking to a cousin of mine, she said her son was going to chase St. Charles for six months. He's safer in jail than he is on the streets. Yes. If you know your child's gonna come out of jail and run the streets, don't believe him when he says he's gonna change him right away. Let him change in jail. Yes. Let it, you know. Hey man, if you come out on the streets, he might get killed. You are less likely to die in jail than he is on the street. Let them stay there. Yes. Might get the education they need. Yes. Might get their GED in jail. Yes. Might pick up a trade in jail. Yes. Let them stay there. Yes. Get on the street, they might get in a worse trouble. He might go to jail for um, a something for a battery. He come out, might go back the next time for murder. Yes. Let them stay there. Yes. 
Let me go on down to uh, Proverbs. Amen. Did I get the chapter? Is that the tenth verse? My son, if sinners entice thee, consent not. I think I forgot which chapter. I forgot which chapter on it. It's Proverbs. Still one and ten. Okay. If they say, Come with us, let us wait for blood. Let us lure privately for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as they in, as the grave, and whole as those who go down into the pit. We shall find precious substance, we shall find precious. We shall find our house was fill our house with spoil. Cast in our lives among us, and let us have one person. In other words, Amen. We go to the 15th verse. My son, walk not thou in the way of them. Refrain thy foot in thy path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Yeah. When your peers come to you, these are the structures I give up to our young people. I'm educating you. When the peers come to you and say, come with us. Let's go kill somebody. Let's go rob somebody. Let's go rape somebody. Let's go get high. Four young people this week, or last weekend, whatever, stole a car in the suburbs, high, drunk, crashed the car, three of them are dead. One is living, got charged. What person might have thought second about? No, no, maybe I shouldn't do it, but it was too embarrassed not to go with the other young people. He wanted to go look for some opposite gang members, and three of them are dead. Don't go with them, young people. Some of y'all are too young to be hanging in the streets now, but you're going to get older. Don't go with them. Encourage them to do it. 
You are saying it's okay to do it, son. It's okay to do it, daughter. And don't accept their homosexual lifestyles and your kid comes out to you and says I'm gay and bring this dude home. I had that problem with the cousin that was living with me. Oh, we had to get us straight. Uh huh. You, she, you ain't bringing this mess in this house. Man, man, you ain't sitting on my steps with this mess. <laughs> Amen. Uh oh, we ain't gonna accept this stuff. Don't accept it. No, uh, they can't help it. They, they can't help themselves. They can get it. They can submit themselves to God and resist the devil. And he shall flee. Then they got people say, well, I tried it. Probably they don't. They tried it. They came to church and they tried to get with the homosexual lifestyle, but they didn't commit themselves to God. They tried to resist, but they did not submit themselves to God. A lot of people come to church and they just want to get delivered from one thing. They want to get delivered from the sin that's messing them up. They may come to church, they want to get rid of crack, but they don't want to quit their lottery. They don't want to quit the cigarettes. They don't want to quit their fornication. They don't want to quit their adultery. They just want to quit what they don't like. You got to come and give it all to God. So I'm saying, God wants it all. Not just some of your sins. He wants it all. He wants all of you. Not just the stuff that you know is tearing you up. Give up the stuff that you like.